All right, guys, so for about a year and a half now, I've been hearing about this Mystery Tackle Box subscription service where basically they send lures to your house every single month. And I've been hearing about it. I've heard great things about it. I hear that it's a tremendous value. You get more in lures than you're paying for this monthly subscription service. And I thought it'd be a really cool way to discover some new lures, try some stuff that's maybe out of my comfort zone, and add some baits to my tackle box that I have confidence in that I've never used before. So finally signed up for the service. This is the Mystery Tackle Box Pro Inshore Box. Uh, I fish inshore mostly. I live here in Cape Coral, Florida, so it's mostly inshore fishing around me. So I thought this would be perfect. Got my first box in. Let's open it up and see what we got. All right, so right away I'm seeing, you know, this is not just some cheap tackle. Here is a Savage Gear Hybrid Shrimp. Now this is gonna be killer for pitching under docks or around oyster beds. Uh, I could throw this up under the mangroves for snook, hit the docks with it for snook. Uh, I could also use this around the grass flats. Trout would slam this thing. Looks super realistic. Uh, Savage Gear, I mean, killer company. It's a really high quality bait for the first one in the box. This thing will definitely catch fish. So next up I've got some of these Yum Swarms. Uh, looks kind of like a jerk bait style or twitch bait. Basically throw this out, twitch, twitch, let it kind of slow fall on a weedless, uh, weightless hook. And it feel uh, pretty slimy, like they got some nice juice on it, nice little scent. Definitely use those. Next up, got some uh, Bomber Shad Jig Heads. I mean, Jig Heads are a staple. I, I put almost everything on a Jig Head inshore. Uh, this is quarter ounce, perfect weight. Uh, I can use this for swim baits. Uh, you know, it's a Shad Jig Head. And I noticed right here, I've got some of this Venom Tackle Rockfish Shad Soft Plastic. So to pair this up with this jig head, I actually love a red head with kind of a white or gray body. Everything from redfish to trout to snook to even tarpon would hit this combo right here. I really like that, how they kind of pair stuff up that makes sense together. They don't just throw some random stuff in here. You can really tell they put some thought behind this. Got a Strike Pro Sparrow 70 Topwater. All right, all right, so this is a wake bait. Uh, two and three quarter ounce. This is a weight bait. So it looks like a crank bait But basically this thing's gonna sit right under the surface and create a nice wake on the surface there So um, this is gonna be perfect in these areas where we have kind of grass flats where the the grass comes up to maybe a, an inch or three inches Under the top of the water so that gives that a really narrow channel for you to throw anything with treble hooks So you can't use a crank bait that's gonna dive into that grass You're gonna get hung up every time this will be perfect because they'll kind of tick right above that grass so uh, creates a nice wake, nice disturbance in the surface. It's got some nice rattles in it too. So this is going to be something a little bit less subtle of a topwater presentation. So if the fish are hungry and biting, this should get them really fired up. And again, redhead, white body, I love that combo. And here, I've never heard of this company, Charlie's Saltwater Edition Swim Baits. Uh, it's got a black back, kind of a clear body with some flash in it. It's going to be perfect for imitating the mullet that are out here. Mullet typically have kind of a darker back and, and kind of silver along the middle. Um, really a pretty impressive range. Oh, look. But wait, there's more. Got a couple hooks. <clears throat> there's a Daichi hooks. And I noticed that one of these suggested... Yeah. So this yum, uh, these yum swarms... It tells you what hook to use and looks just like that hook. So once again, they've really put a lot of thought into this. They give you the soft plastic and give you a good hook to use them on. So I'm um, super impressed with this. Actually, like, you know, these guys aren't from Florida. I thought, ah, they're not going to be able to send me stuff that works for what I do. But um, apparently they do. You can see right here, they actually include in every box a card that tells you a breakdown of all the stuff that's inside, what the retail price is, so you can see exactly the kind of value you're getting for your monthly subscription cost. So about $42 worth of stuff in a box that costs about half that much. Um, I'll take that kind of deal any day of the week. I'm here at my home in Cape Coral, Florida with Mike Plaint, my roommate. Uh, just opened up my mystery taco box, got some sweet new lures we're gonna try out. We're heading out here out of Boquilia, Florida near our home in Cape Coral. See if we can't find some redfish, trout, uh, snook, Maybe even a tarpon. We're gonna launch right now, tide's looking right. Let's see if we can't find some fish. Oh! 
<laughs> a little trout. Well, I've been out here, I made about four casts with this bomber jig head with this Charlie's little swim bait on it and uh, just hooked a nice trout, lost it right at the boat, it came off, but uh, obviously this little thing works, you know, it's a little more finesse, starting off with this, kind of see if they're biting today, and uh, like I said, four casts in, already hooked my first fish out of this box, so not a bad start. I'm going to keep throwing this thing, see if I can't pick up a few more trout in this area. Nice trying to figure out what the fish are wanting. So I like to start off small, just try to get some bites. And then, uh, you know, if they're feeding pretty aggressively, I can always move up in size. But uh, what I like to do when I'm throwing a paddle tail uh, on a jig head or weedless or anything, is I'll cast it out. And in the beginning, when you're trying to figure out what the fish are doing, I really just like to vary my retrieve. So, you know, one cast, uh, I'll throw it out there and I'll just steady reel it pretty slow. And I'll do that for the entire cast, see if I get bit. Then if not, I'll cast back out there and reel it in a little faster. See if I get bit on that. And then if not, what I'll start doing is do kind of a slow retrieve with like a pause and a twitch twitch. Slow retrieve a little more, pause it, and then twitch, twitch, twitch. Slow retrieve, twitch. And I'll just kind of give it these sort of sporadic twitches. And every single cast, I'll vary it up from the previous one and I'll do the same thing for the entire cast, the entire retrieve. And Basically, what you're just trying to do is figure out what kind of action, what kind of mood the fish are in. So they want it slow, or they want it kind of erratic, twitching a lot, or they want you to just kind of burn it. You know, you never really know until you get out here and figure it out. You know, one day, the next one hour, the next really, it can change. So uh, that's the key for me. Whenever I'm throwing a search bait, like a paddle tail or a crank bait or anything like that, is vary up your retrieve as often as possible, but be sure that you remember what you are doing when you get that first bite. Once you start getting a couple bites, you know, to replicate that strategy in that retrieve style. I got my first fish with this bomber jig head and a little Charlie swim bait. A little speckled trout, nothing to write home about, but uh, the trout are definitely liking this little finesse style jig head and swim bait. Uh, he smashed it, he actually hit it once. I missed him and he came back for it a second time. Just out here cruising this big grass flat route, kind of in the middle of nothing, but we've been seeing a ton of bait. And usually where there's bait, there's fish. Let's let this guy go, keep throwing out, see if we can't uh, upgrade, get a little something bigger in the boat. Another trout on this same swim bait. This little paddle tail from Charlie's on the bomber uh, jig head. Another small guy, but uh, hey, haven't been out here very long. There's two trout in the boat and one that I lost. So, you know, they're eating and they're liking that little paddle tail. Let this guy go. You know, didn't come out here to catch small trout, but came out here to catch fish. We're doing that so far. Just gotta see if we can't weed through these small guys, get a bigger trout, maybe redfish. Uh, snook are probably gonna be up in the in the mangroves and in the structure, but there could definitely be redfish cruising this flat with these trout. So I'm just gonna keep casting this out. Seems to be working for now. They seem to be wanting on just kind of a slow and steady retrieve. Uh, I got one of them on a twitch. The rest of them just been steady retrieved. So. Uh, I'll keep varying it up, but I'm going to focus on slow retrieves with the occasional twitch for right now. Oh! And there was trout number four, lost it at the boat. <laughs> trout are loving this paddle tail. Yep, and there we go, right on cue. There's another one. And there is trout number three landed. Uh, I've lost two others. 
still not very big. This one's a little bit bigger than those other two, but they are loving this Bomber and Charlie's combo that I got in the Mystery Tackle Box. Uh, been out here less than an hour, and that's five trout hooked, three landed, all on the same exact bait. Yeah, that's working. In fact, uh, it's kind of starting to rip up my paddle tail after five fish, but I can still get another one out of there even though we kind of ripped a chunk out of it. Yeah, not too bad, getting a little better. Still not what we're looking for though. There he goes. Nice, fix this guy. This has held up pretty well considering I've caught five fish on it already. It's got a little tear in it, but uh, that's good for at least one more fish. Keep throwing it. Luckily I got a whole pack of them. Got about maybe a dozen of them in that pack and that came in the box, so should have plenty. If I can get six fish out of every one, that'd be a good day. There we go. Yep. Yep, this one's a little better. They are getting bigger. This little Charlie's paddle tail is doing work and they're starting to get a little bit bigger. That thing is working. They are loving that today. And uh, that's a decent little trout. They're getting a little bit bigger. Uh, let's see, measure him on the accent, paddle. He is 16 inches on the nose. So not terribly big, but I mean, that's actually a keeper. Do we want to keep these guys? Uh, we'll keep one or two. Yeah. I think we'll go ahead and keep this guy. We got some friends coming over for dinner. Oh, he's actually got a bite out of him, dude. Looks like a, maybe like a little shark got him or maybe a talon from something, I don't know. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and keep this guy. We're gonna keep a few fish. We got some friends coming over for dinner tonight. Treat him to some fresh fish. And uh, that right there, decent little trout, 16 inches. But this paddle tail is doing work right now. Submit this guy in the fish brain app too. We're gonna put him on ice. Real blazers. Dude, that pinfish is perfect. All right. Got dinner started already. Look at that. Even the pinfish. <laughs> are swiping at this. Look at the bait size and look at that pinfish. Got bit off a little more than he could chew. He's barely bigger than the bait. Now this would actually be money bait. Fortunately, Mike's got the live well and I don't have anything to put this guy in and I don't have a hook tied on for him, but this is primo bait out here. We've been seeing a bunch of them uh, and there's one right there. Beautiful little fish. Such pretty patterns on these guys. I'm gonna go ahead and let him go since I don't have anything to tie him onto. Gosh, that was the second hit the water, that thing smashed it. <laughs> Thought it was a baby trout. Over here catching bait on this thing. Look at that, every cast right now. There's another trout. They are inhaling this thing, they're loving it. All right, all right, all right, relax. Trout number six, not exactly a monster, but I mean, literally every single cast right now, I'm hooking something. They are loving this bait. Mystery tackle box, I mean, I've only tried one of these baits so far and already it is producing nonstop. Nice. I mean, literally, I feel like, watch. Cast back out here. I got a feeling I'm about to hook another one. You ready? Wipe this lens off. Pull the trout splash. Let that sink to the bottom. Now we'll reel it in nice and slow. 
and steady. Give a little pop. You're joking me, look at that. Fish on. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. This is literally too easy right now. Finally, the tail's gone on that bait. That's uh, the seventh trout and a little bonus pinfish I've caught on this exact bait right here. Uh, I'll just switch out the plastic. Luckily, I've got plenty of them in my mystery toggle box. Uh, there's about 10 or 12 of them in there. But, uh, I mean, they're not big trout, but literally every cast, like I'm calling it at this point, I'm getting bit. So just keep throwing it out, see if we can't weed through these little guys, get some a little bigger. Nice. These are those Charlie's Saltwater Edition out of Stewart, Florida. So actually pretty close to where I'm at, uh, just the other coast. But uh, yeah, I got about, about 10 of these guys and I got seven fish on the first one. So uh, that's one thing about soft plastics. I hate when, you know, it's usually kind of a, t uh, a trade off between good action on the soft plastic, which means that it's soft plastic and durability. You know, like the, the better the action, the softer the bait, typically the less durable they are. Um, so this seems to have a really good kind of middle ground where it's got really good action but it's holding up pretty well. I mean, any soft plastic that holds up to seven fish with teeth like speckled trout, I'm happy about that. So what I do when you're fishing with for fish that have teeth like speckled trout or even redfish that have really rough mouths is after every fish, you really wanna check your leader, make sure it's not frayed. Once that starts getting frayed, you'll set the hook on a big fish and it'll break right off. Mine still feels pretty good. Those trout aren't too bad in terms of their mouths. Uh, but I've kind of drifted off that flat where we were hooking them left and right. So I'm going to head back up in there, see if uh, there's a big school of them. Maybe I can find some bigger ones or maybe even some redfish mixed in with them, but not really getting action here. I've kind of drifted off that area where I got five in a row. So I'm going to head back up that way, see if we can't get back on the fish. It's been a fun morning so far. I've been out here 45 minutes. I'll take that kind of start in today. Seven fish, not too bad. Fun. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. Another pinfish, barely bigger than the jig head, and he ripped my paddle tail off somehow, or I ripped it off when I set the hook. Look at the guy. He was nibbling on my bait, and I just snagged him in the back. Honestly, like, I could throw this guy out for bait just like that. He could get smashed, why not? Well, awesome paddle tail anyways. Now he's on a jig head and he's hooked in the back, so he's not gonna live very long or act very natural, but might as well let him swim around for a minute, see what happens. Something has my bait and is messing with it. I felt the pinfish moving. This is definitely heavier than that. He's running sideways to me, so he hasn't felt this pressure yet. No, that's a fish. That's a fish. I got a feeling it's a catfish. The way it's fighting feels like a catfish. It is a catfish. All right, so that is a gaff top. So what we call them in Texas. I know a lot of other people that call them sail cats. Um, Pretty fun fight. Uh, these bars right here are really sharp. They got two on each side, one on each side, and one in their dorsal. Um, then the gaff tops have this kind of pretty little phalanges that come off the edge, whatever you want to call them. But uh, I actually have kind of like a mental block when it comes to grabbing these guys. Uh, when I first started fishing, I caught a small catfish in freshwater, went to grab it, its barb went through my middle finger and came out the other side, right up against the bone. Uh, one of the worst experiences of my life in, in terms of fishing. And so now every time I catch one of these things, I just hate grabbing them. But this is the best way to grab them. You basically grab them on the belly, uh, put one barb in between your index finger and your middle finger, got the other one below your, above your thumb, kind of secures all those barbs so they can't get you and uh, let you hold on to them. But these are actually pretty good to eat, but they're a pain to clean. They're super slimy. Uh, so I'm just gonna let this guy go. But I mean, pretty funny. I caught a pinfish on my tiny little jig. Uh, 
just went ahead and threw it right back out the way it was hooked and turned it into a fish in about 30 seconds. Those jig heads are multi-purpose, I'd say. We'll let this guy go. Look at this, still throwing the same paddle tail. And that is a little baby grouper. Uh, I think that's a little gag grouper. Uh, obviously just a baby. These things get enormous and live offshore when they're bigger, but pretty cool. I've actually never caught a grouper in my life, except for in Panama. There's some small grouper out there we get a lot of. Um, not too bad though. Fun little fight on light tackle. hit it right by the boat. That is cool. Go ahead and submit this guy in the fish brain app, get my first gag grouper award. Grouper! Right, so we're out here pelagic fishing in four foot of water, catching monster grouper. Fish on. Another little grouper. <laughs> that is so funny. Another little baby grouper. I was wondering, it was heading straight down instead of a. Uh, Kind of come to the surface like trout tend to do. Another little baby grouper, man. They are pretty fish. I uh, tied back on that small paddle tail. And sure enough, got another grouper. Now these things are delicious to eat, but obviously this guy is not a keeper. He's too small. Too cool. Huh. They're not typical catches out here on the flats. Makes for a fun day though. Never know what's gonna bite. All right, so I've been catching plenty of trout on that little uh, Charlie's paddle tail, but I don't want to keep catching these small trout. I got a decent one, so we got one for dinner. Um, but I want to catch a redfish or a snook or maybe even a tarpon, so I'm going to switch it up. Uh, I also got in my mystery toggle box a few of these Venom swim baits, uh, extra soft it says. Uh, these are a little bit bigger profile paddle tails, so hopefully this will help me weed through these small trout and get a little something bigger into the boat. nice color it looks like it feels like it's got good action really soft plastic um, it's now it's not dark the other ones were black back uh, this one's not it's white so I'll see I'll start throwing this and if nothing's hitting this that tells me they want dark colors today so I may have to look at my toggle box see what I got that's dark but uh, the profile of this looks killer so that should work we'll see we've also found a little bit deeper water and this thing's heavier help me get it down a little better See what we can find on this guy. All right, well, I've been throwing this bigger paddle tail here for a few minutes, trying to weed through all these trout. Sure enough, a little trout slammed it right by the boat. <laughs> but obviously they're hitting either one. Uh, I thought maybe going with this little beefier profile helped me weed through these little guys, but they don't seem to care. They are just eating today, and they're wanting that paddle tail. Let this guy go. And if I still can't wait through these small ones, if I catch a few more on this guy, I do have bigger swim baits with me. I could really upsize, but uh, that looks like redfish candy to me. I think what I'm gonna do is instead of the steady retrieve, I'm gonna start bouncing it along the bottom, almost as if I was working a shrimp. 
Uh, I've caught plenty of redfish working a paddle tail as if it was a shrimp. So just because it looks like a bait fish doesn't necessarily mean you gotta work it like a bait fish with a steady retrieve. I'll try that, see if that doesn't work. mackerel out here on the flats that is a relatively uncommon occurrence we have seen them here like once but uh, that is not normal that is typically an offshore beyond the breakers kind of fish all kinds of bycatch today man I got a grouper a Spanish Mac that's a that's a solid Spanish mackerel too they're basically it's very similar to kingfish king mackerel but they don't get nearly as big and that's a pretty good one Nice, dude. All right, well, super fun day on the water. I mean, we didn't catch any monster redfish or snook like we were hoping for, but you can never complain about a day where you catch a variety of fish. I mean, we caught a ton of fish. Uh, I think I got 20 something fish to the boat. By the time all was said and done, Super impressed with the mystery tackle box so far. We'll see what next month's uh, box looks like. But yeah, I mean, Spanish mackerel, speckled trout, grouper, bunch of catfish. I mean, they all put up a good fight. Definitely a fun day on the water. Got to see some dolphins, some other cool stuff. So uh, time well spent for sure. We're gonna get back, get everything cleaned off. Uh, I'm disgusting right now. And I will catch you guys on the next episode.